Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Number six, Penn State. We finally get to see the Lions as they take on Rutgers tonight. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey, and welcome to CFA Primetime. And, Mike, everybody asked the question. They're ranked number six in the nation, but how good is Penn State? Supposedly, the book is maybe not quite as good on offense, but a much-improved team on defense. That, to me means they're a load. Does Rutgers have a real shot in this ballgame tonight? Ron, I think Penn State's a great football team, but Rutgers does have a shot. Where they have a shot is Ray Lucas, their quarterback, really has to have the game of his life, but they have to protect him because Penn State has a good rush up inside with their front four. Willis, Presley, Battaglia, all the skill players have to play a big part in this ballgame. Well, Mike, you mentioned the skill players, the tight end Battaglia and Lucas, the quarterback. It actually is a very special story, and let's go down to Mike Adamley with more on that. Michael? Ron and Mike, quarterback Ray Lucas and tight end Marco Battaglia are the core of the Rutgers pass offense and two of the Big East's biggest stars. But as we watch them play tonight, we'll tell you about another story, a relationship that extends beyond the playing field. Two young men, one from outside of Newark, the other from Queens. They are roommates and best friends, and the bond between them transcends race and culture and speaks volumes about what is good in college football. I'll tell you another thing that's good in college football if you're a player, friends and family, and there's a lot of Lucases, a lot of Battaglias here, over 100 strong, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, Marie Battaglia, Ellen Lucas, they are all here, and they are all anticipating the kickoff as much as we are. Okay, Michael, we look forward to seeing more of them and hearing more on that uh, on that outstanding story, the Battaglias and the Lucases. This man, well, 271 wins. The most among active uh, 1A coaches, Joe Paterno. And across the way, Rutgers. Doug Graver, sixth season there with the Scarlet Knights, a record of 26, 30, and 1. In this ball game, Mike Gottfried would be huge for his program if they could come up with this one tonight. They need to win badly in this series, Ron. And to get that win, we talked about Ray Lucas. Offensively, you have to do the unexpected against Penn State. You've got to be able to throw on first down. You've got to be able to let it all hang out in your play calling tonight. You're looking at Willis, number 31. And back there with him is Cameron Chadwick, number three. a good look at Cameron right there. Brett Conway will kick it off for Penn State as this one just about underway. And the interesting thing about this game being moved from Rutgers to the Meadowlands with all the Penn State fans in the New Jersey and New York area, this almost becomes a home game for Penn State. At the goal line, it's Willis. So the Russell Athletic starting lineups for tonight for Rutgers. The running back, Terrell Willis. Well, he's got to have a good night if the Scarlet Knights are going to stay close in this one tonight. We've already heard about him, but everybody loves him. Number 81, the tight end, Marco Battaglia, the young man from Queens, and he is getting lots of attention from the pro scouts. The offensive line, here's the big question tonight. Jack McKiernan, the left tackle. He was injured on Thursday. He is starting in the ball game tonight, and the coaches are very concerned about that left tackle position. to bust it outside. Collins will shove him out of bounds. And let's take a look at the starters on defense. For that front four, Terry Killens at defensive end, very quick and makes lots of big plays. He has had an outstanding early season. The linebackers, well, Aaron Collins. What would Penn State do without a Collins in the lineup? And they just had two Collins run him out of bounds. In the secondary, Brian Miller at left corner. Preseason all Big Ten. The coaching staff thinks that he is one of the best cover men they've had for the Nittany Lions in some time. Lucas, Battaglia, and there's the combination that Mike Adamley was talking about, and Mike Godfrey, and it's a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Ron, that's what Ray Lucas has to do tonight. When you play Penn State, first of all, their secondary is going to play very soft and very cautious in the secondary. They're going to give you the little throws, and you've got to be able to get it to Marco Battaglia for the little hooks, eight, ten yards, and move the chains. 
And Mike, that first pass is extremely important. Is it not for a quarterback in a big game like this? Big confidence builder, but he's a fifth-year senior, so he's an experienced quarterback. Powell has come in at wide receiver, only one setback. That's Willis. Zinger, incomplete, almost picked off. But Taglia is who they wanted. And Nelson, Jim Nelson, number 44, got a hand on football and tipped it. Again, trying to go back to the curl route with Marco Battaglia. Just an outside release. He's just going to sit down outside of Jim Nelson. Jim Nelson, good coverage. Just finding him, staying with him, getting his right hand in there to deflect the ball. Mike, I saw you visit with a couple of scouts before the ball game from the, uh, from the NFL. They like Battaglia, don't they? They like him as a possible H-back in the NFL. So that means, does he have speed of 4'6", 4'7"? He's got 4'5", speed. He can wow. run. Very much there as Willis is hit by Todd Atkins. Check it, Bruce Presley, the ball carrier. And as soon as he got the ball, he got Atkins. When I used to coach against Penn State, 86 through 89, this is a different style of defense. They're more aggressive. They're more like the Washingtons, the Miamis, uh, the, the Nebraska's now the four down linemen, quick linemen working up the field. This is a very quick defense. Well, Killens and Atkins on the outside, just that. Very quick, very agile. Here comes the blitz. And hands complete across the first down marker. Thunder Burkin will pick up five more yards almost to midfield. So back-to-back -back first downs, it's a gain of 14. Very nice throw by Ray Lucas. Again, good cushions on the outside. Reggie Funderburk, number six. See the cushion he has now. He's going to break inside. He's a former basketball player out of DeMatha High School, right in front of Brian Miller, the veteran in the secondary for Penn State for the completion. yard line. Presley bounces off the tackle, has five yards, and we thought was going to be dropped for a four-yard loss. Aaron Collins finishes him off, but it was Schioli who really banged him, but didn't lock up. Schioli had a shot at him, and you look at his number. He's number five. He's a defensive lineman. He's 6'3", 265, but he was a quarterback in high school. Now he's a defensive tackle at 265 pounds, wearing that number five. got to be tough to be a defensive lineman and wear a number five. <laughs> Plus, in fact, Mike, he's one of only two true freshmen who played last year on that very good Penn State team. Again, the man in the up position as Lucas rolls the pocket to the right and throws it complete, just shy of the 35 to Thunderbird. And right now, Rutgers has the offense going and a shaken up Penn State player. Jason Collins is the man who was shaken up. And you could see that the Rutgers training staff, it happened right in front of their bench. And they came right off their bench immediately to come out. And in fact, you see Doug Graber, the head coach for, uh, for Rutgers, coming over to try to give aid to Jason Collins. Ray Lucas has a strong arm. And John Sandusky, the coach, the defensive coordinator, Jerry Sandusky, was saying that it seems like he's been around here for five years, ten years, that the guy's been playing quarterback here for Rutgers. Mike, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with more in just a moment. 12.27 left in this opening quarter. Well, we're back, and the, the, the sad news is we can't speculate, obviously, because we're not doctors, but... The minute that injury occurred, as we mentioned, the training staff and also Doug Graber, the head coach at Rutgers, went running out to, uh, to Jason Collins. I mean, the injury obviously was very serious. It is to his leg. And now a battery of, uh, of uh, first aid people have come out on the field. They have the cart. And it looked as though, Mike, an air cast or something. They were trying to get uh, uh, on that leg before they loaded him onto the gurney. So we could only... We can only suggest that uh, the leg injury to Collins is uh, relatively serious, and that's his brother Aaron, who uh, obviously is upset. Brothers four and five to play at Penn State University, and you can see uh, that, that right now his concentration is not on the field of play, as it shouldn't be. He is, and here are the brothers, Andre, 
Jerry, Philip, Jason, and Aaron. And you see the years that uh, Andre was there 86 to 89, Jerry 89 through 91, Philip 93, 94, Jason uh, and Aaron there now. And uh, the family is here tonight. And you can see they're from Cinemason, New Jersey. And that's Mrs. Collins, and they have elected to put him on a gurney that is raised up. It looks as though they have immobilized the leg, yeah. And uh, he is being taken right out the tunnel here at the Meadowlands at Giant Stadium. So, Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. What do you have for us? Well, it was pretty gruesome, uh, Ron and Mike, on the Rutgers sideline. Many of their players saw it. Uh, he had that inflatable cast put on his left leg, and they are almost certain that he has fractured his fibula, fibula and tibia. So, tough, tough loss for Penn State. Wow. First down, 36 and a half yard line. Here comes the blitz. They give it on the running play, and Willis will take it straight up the middle, and he's going to have about five yards before Brandon Noble is there to make the hit on him. Stan Parrish, the offensive coordinator for Rutgers, off to a good start in play calling because he's doing a nice job of keeping the Penn State defense off balance. Last year, Ron, Rutgers against Penn State ran 94 plays for 513 yards. So they ran the ball and threw the ball effectively last year, but they were up against a much better offensive football team. They're going to have to put points on the board tonight. Second down, the ball squarely in the middle of the field. You see, this time, Lucas does not go under center as they roll the pocket, and then he throws the ball, a backhanded pass, and it's intercepted by Kim Herring. You can't have those type of mistakes out of the senior quarter. He knows right away. He said, it's my fault. I shouldn't have thrown the ball. It was a little shovel that he was trying to get. Direct snap. Rolling to the left. He's going to try to shovel the ball. Brassioli, number five, with pressure. Here's a little shovel, but it just got away from him. He's trying to get it to his tight end, Marco Battaglia. But instead, to Kim Herring, the aggressive player out of the secondary for Penn State. Boy, what an effort by Herring as he just laid out to make the interception. And the Nittany Lions stopped what was a very good-looking Rutgers drive to open the game. First down. The pass goes to Ingram. Breaks the tackle, but they say he stepped out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. So here are the starting lineups for the Penn State Nittany Lions on offense. At running back, Mike Archie. Kujana Carter is gone, and now he is the man, number two. The receivers, Bobby Ingram, the first Penn State wide receiver to go over 1,000 yards in a season. And with the offensive line, this is an awfully good group. Joe Paterno thinks, though, that Jeff Harding's just might be as good or a better guard than Penn State's ever had, and that is saying a mouthful. We'll try to watch him some tonight. It's a fumble, a fumble, and now a touchdown, and Ingram will take it the distance. Good heavens, what a play. <laughs> Doug Graver has to be thinking, less than 60 seconds ago, I'm looking at us taking this thing down and scoring a touchdown on our opening drive. We have one foolish play. Then they come up and fumble. We get it. Fumble back and they score. I came out of a game Thursday, that North Carolina-Louisville game. A lot of things like this happened. This is a tough start for Rutgers. Conway with the extra point attempt, trying to put the Lions up 7-0. He does. So we'll take a break. Seven to nothing. Penn State will be right back. Seven to nothing. Penn State. Fumble. They get. Well, take it here, Mike. John Whitman, Ron, the fullback, gets stuck. Drops the football, goes up in the air. Cameron Chadwick gets it for a second. Then the, some days it just bounces right. Bounce right to Bobby Ingram, and you're not going to catch him. 
So Ingram takes it the distance, and here's the kickoff. This is going to come down to Willis at the six. Finally pushed out of bounds around the 34-yard line, and Mike, this has been the Achilles Hill up Rutgers all season long. Turnovers. Well, you, look, you look in their first three ball games, seven fumbles, five interceptions, and the penalties, the mistakes that you have, the tack on some mistake, individual mistakes that you have, and that's why you're looking at a ball club that feels like they're a little snake bit here in the early going. Well, we haven't played four minutes. We played three minutes and 56 seconds, and they've already had two miscues, an interception and a fumble that went for a touchdown. Johnson incomplete they will say at the 34 yard line as Aaron Collins came over with the cover so let's take a look at the lineups Ron Ray Lucas come out he's very accurate he made the one mistake on the little shovel draw but he's accurate. You just need to stay with the game plan. They've got a nice game plan here early. Going to be hit and knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Mark Tate come out of secondary, number 33, and made the hit on Terrell Willis before he could get started. This is where you look for Marco Battaglia, Ron. Third down and nine. You've got to try to find the tight end. He's your chain mover. Well, let's see if they go to him. He's lined up to the short side of the field. They need the 45-yard line. Boy, he had him open, and he threw it short. Thunderbird on the deep curl, and he was there. Good defense by Penn State. They pinballed with both linebackers, pinballed Marco Pataglia and took him away. But Thunderbird was wide open, like you say. When the backers collapsed on the tight end, that opened it up for Reggie Thunderbird. But Ray Lucas just a little short with the throw. Jared Slovan will be kicking away to Bobby Ingram. And when we talked to Doug Graver the other day, he said, we've had problems in the punting game against Penn State. We need a draw in this part of the game. I'll tell you what, Killen's almost got to it, Mike. As Ingram runs right into the man who was being blocked. ESPN is your home for college football to get on Thursday at 7.30. Prepare for your football Saturday with the weekend kickoff show. At 8, Maryland coach Mark Duffner hopes to keep the Terps green season alive when they square off against ACC rival Georgia Tech. Wally Richardson. Six four, two hundred fifteen pounds, out of Sumter, South Carolina. Gets his pass complete. Back into the boundary, Joe Jurevicius. Ron John Gudikins, the defensive coordinator for Rutgers, said the last drive versus Texas Tech, where Penn State really needed it to win the game. He said Wally Richardson stayed in the pocket. He picked up the blitz. He made critical throws. He said he earned our defensive staff's respect in that game. They were down 23-21. He hit two third and eights. He was 11 for 12 in the second half and just kind of grew up as a quarterback in the second half of that ball game. Well, they pull the guards. Archie with his first carry, and he's going to be stopped after a gain of about a half yard, but it may have been enough for the first down as Mark Washington comes up from a strong safety position to tackle him. And last year, Penn State's quarterback, Kerry Collins, threw 257 passes, was only sacked three times. The offensive line takes a lot of pride in that. Wally Richardson was sacked three times in the Texas Tech game, but they were all his fault, not the offensive line. He didn't pick up sight adjustments on the eighth man rushing, so they take, they're taking the offensive line off the hook on those three sacks. Well, it's amazing, Mike, that what, last year, the only three sacks uh, for the entire season by the Penn State offensive line. That's an incredible number. Freddie Scott in motion. 
Five tough yards by Kurt Ennis. Hit by Sheridan. Ennis was a linebacker. But we're told that he's a good enough athlete he could play wide receiver or running back. Well, he was a second-team linebacker, and they moved him over to tailback last week, and they taught him six plays. They said, these are only six plays you need to know. And he gained, he carried the ball 14 times for 135 yards. They picked up two more plays. He's got eight tonight and one pass protection. to the 45-yard line. It is Freddie Scott. They'll push him out at the 43-yard line, and he has a first down. When you have two good receivers like Penn State has, you've got Freddie Scott on one side, Bobby Ingram on the other side. You want to try to double one of them. You can't double both of them, but you got Freddie Scott on, the, on this side. He's the fastest of all receivers in front of Kevin Williams here for the catch. They want to get him the ball a little bit more tonight. They want to get him involved in this offense a little bit more than they have the first couple ball games. So if you just joined us at 7 nothing Penn State we have 851 left to play opening quarter and the two deadly wide receivers Ingram and Scott all to the open side of the field but it's Archie back to the short side he gets cracked pretty hard Paul Rivers and Mark Washington coming up to make the hit Paul played as a true freshman actually we thought we we're gonna see some of uh, Gil Ross tonight but uh, he's had a knee injury so uh, Rutgers giving some nickel look tonight, so they're getting the extra defensive back in, and Rivers, one who is getting playing time this evening. Ron, when I talked to Fran Ganner on uh, Wednesday, he was concerned whether Mike Archie was going to play. He got kicked in the back against Temple. They thought he'd miss this game. Play action. Zips it to the 30-yard line, and Mike, I think, right there. Wally Richardson shows he was almost leaning backwards in what kind of strength he has with the arm. What a gun. Oh, you're so right. He's got a strong arm, and he's on the other side. He's got Bobby Ingram. You got Norris Crawford trying to blitz here. The safety, number two, trying to put pressure on. It was picked up perfect. There's the gun by Wally Richardson. John Whitman, the fullback. Now, here's the route by Bobby Ingram. And when you talk to pro scouts now, they say he's the real deal. That's a pretty good statistic there, 11 of 13. Would you say he's the go-to guy? Well, on top of the end zone, just too far for Freddie Scott. They have so many weapons, Ron, and then you, you talk from the open and you said, are they as good as Nebraska and Florida State? We'll look at them a little bit more and make that uh, decision, but I'm sure they're not far off. Uh, they, they've got so many weapons. When you've got two receivers like Ingram and Scott, you got running backs out. Uh, you got so many running backs to throw in there. you got fullbacks that can run. Richardson's got a strong arm. The only thing maybe they've had a little drop off in is Kyle Brady, a tight end. Breaks it up the middle. Has five yards and will squim his way down to the 24-yard line. Hardings with an awfully good block, number 50 up front. And Hardings is the one that a lot of uh, pro scouts think is, is really fine. And look at this offensive line. You're going to see Marco Rivera, number 54, with a block. You get a good pull block there by Andre Johnson. He's 300 pounds pulling. And when you can control the offensive line of scrimmage like this offensive line, this may be the best offensive line in the country. Now, we've had Nebraska. They're solid. Tennessee's got a pretty good offensive line. Auburn. But this offensive line is sure impressive. Third down. They need the 20. Overthrowing. You can see the style that John Goodikens, the defensive coordinator, he's not going to sit back for Rutgers. He's bringing Norris Crawford again, number two, out of the secondary to try to pressure Wally Richardson. They do not want Wally, Wally Richardson to get any kind of rhythm going because they want to pressure him and put people in his face. Well, Conway comes on. He's two of four in field goal attempts. His longest, 1994. Last year uh, was 49 yards. This attempt, not nearly that. It's going to be from 41. Plenty of distance. And he got it. 7-13 left to play in this opening quarter. It is Penn State, 10, Rutgers nothing. 
Jared Slovan to kick it away to Bobby Ingram. Good kick this time. And a fair catch signal for and made at the 37-yard line. 43 yards on the kick. Talk about as we watch this first quarter, I'm impressed with Wally Richardson. You mentioned the strength of his arm. Now, he's got a great delivery, and his delivery is right where you want him throwing the ball for. He's got a nice high delivery. He's got a good motion here. He's waited his turn here behind Collins. He's six foot four, 215. And everybody said, maybe this is the one weakness they're going to have on this Penn State football team. They forget that. He's no weakness. He's a strength. Four of six tonight for 35 yards. fullback and he will take it ahead for a couple of yards to the 40 Brian Sheridan uh, the middle linebacker for Rutgers steps up and makes the hit on him Brian Sheridan's an outstanding linebacker played hurt last year and the, his hamstring was hurt he played high school football at Union for Lou Rotino who's one of the top coaches in New Jersey and Rutgers beat Penn State on him they thought he was going to go to Penn State Rutgers pulled him away from him he's one of the main reasons they went and changed their defense from a 3-4 to a 4-3 they really like this kid Brian Sheridan no well, Mike uh, this is Keith Conlon the big right tackle who was uh, shaken up on the play he uh, went down to one knee and the player signal for the, the training staff to come out and take a look at him and they're going to bring him out of the ball game for just a moment so Pete Marzik number 71 6 3 280 pounds will check into the lineup for Keith Conlon let's see if they go back to Freddie Scott on the top side here number 31 fastest of all the receivers Here at the middle, Richardson's throw. He's got it complete at the 47 yard line to Ingram, and that is on the Rutgers side of the 50 yard line. Good for 13. Ron, just like you teach it, Fran Gander's got to be proud of the way he's dragging his feet, keeping the ball in bounds. This is an outstanding pattern against Cameron Chadwick. Look at his feet, just stopping those feet just like you practice every day, just making sure you're in bounds. He's impressive. Joe Paterno said last night that by the time Terry Collins left, that he said, I describe it as a window, but Terry really understood the window and who to look for and where to throw it. He said that's probably the biggest thing that Wally Richardson has got to do. He's got to make that window a little smaller as far as what he sees. He's got a house full of windows right now. <laughs> going to go on top, and he's got a man wide open. It's Ingram. Touchdown, Penn State. 47 yards. window is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, you know, actually, I said that reversed. I said he's looking for a smaller one or yep. looking for a bigger one, and yeah, I think he kind of broadened it right there. He's got a beachfront property uh, look here. <laughs> Boy, you got to give credit up front. Johnson, Rivera, Tilch, Hardings, and Marzik. What a good job of protection by that offensive line. What what happens is Rutgers is trying to double him. There's a, a double coverage with Norris Crawford and Cameron Chadwick, and he just runs right past double coverage on the post route for the touchdown. Conway knocks it home. And with 5.02 left in this opening quarter, it is Penn State 17 and Rutgers nothing. So Robert Higgins comes in at quarterback and uh, after the play, we'll go down to Mike Adamley and get an update on exactly what happened with Ray Lucas. Higgins on the third down play. Steps up, has the pass complete. Guess who? Marco Battaglia, and he has the first down, and Mike Adamley, let's go down to you. Well, right now, the word on Ray Lucas, his left thumb, they taped it up heavily. Not quite sure if it's a laceration or a sprain, but they've taken him into the Rutgers locker room, no doubt, for x-rays. They'll check him out, and hopefully he'll be back out here by the end of this second quarter before then. As soon as I find out more, I'll let you guys know. Okay, great, Mike. We'll, uh, we'll keep a, an ear in your direction. 138 left to play in this opening quarter. Penn State 17 to nothing, but uh, the Scarlet Knights driving. This is their deepest penetration. Presley, right up the middle. Boy, you could hear the pop from up here. Brad Schioli was the first man to get to him. Ron, in talking to Doug Graber yesterday in his office, we went down there to talk to him and visit with him. And I asked him about the backup to Ray Lucas, and he talked really highly, and you were there, about Robert Higgins. He said he's tough, 
He could be a starting safety. He's a physical guy. He's he's going to be our quarterback next year. So I've got a feeling they've got a lot of confidence in him, and there's not going to be a big drop-off in this quarterback position right now. He looks like he's ready for this challenge. Two wide receivers come to the left side. It's Harper and Thunderbird. Penn State sets up for the blitz, and here they come. Collins pass wide open as they blow into coverage, and he steps out of bounds. Presley, the ball was thrown just enough behind him. Good heavens. You got to pull up there. You got to stop, and you got to try to get yourself in the end zone. Bruce Presley's going to swing out of the backfield. And I think what happened is the linebacker ran into the tight end and couldn't cover him. Now, Bruce Presley just can't stop. It just took him out of bounds, and they're inside the five yard line. But a nice throw by Robert Higgins. It was. Doug Graver has to be saying, a, what? We are a little snake bit here, guys. They need to get in this end zone before yeah. this avalanche comes down the hill. 52 seconds left in the opening quarter, and now Rutgers wants a timeout. If you joined us late, here are the key plays that have happened already in this ballgame. This, the strangest of all, watch this right here. Lucas. Ray Lucas just flips the ball, Ron. He just tried to get the shovel to mark up a tag, but it was picked off. Oh, look at Ingram right here. Working his way through double coverage and a post pattern. Just outran coverage. And one other play that, that has been a real key was a fumble picked off of the air by Rutgers. They fumbled it right back, and Ingram took it for a touchdown. Mike Adam Lee, uh, back to you. Ron, if the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are to get back into this football game with Penn State, they're going to have to do it without Ray Lucas, and Robert Higgins is going to have to carry the load. Just talk to the Rutgers trainer, Don Kessler. They suspect a possible fracture of his left thumb. That's why they taped it up. There was some blood, apparently. Uh, part of the bone was sticking through the skin, so most likely, in all likelihood, I should say, he is through for the evening. Yeah, I would imagine so, Michael. Boy, that... That's amazing. That would be two compound fractures tonight in the first quarter. On first down, Presley gets the pitch, and he'll walk it in. Touchdown, Rutgers. Ezra Johnson, number 48, with a block leading Bruce Presley into the end zone. Mike. Really good scene, and it shows you what kind of guy Battaglia is. His best friend is Ray Lucas, who's in the locker room being attended to, but he walked over and just picked up Higgins and just gave him a big hug to a show of confidence. Look what you did. We're in the end zone. We scored. Meyer. And he knocks it home. And Mike Tirico, let's go back to you. Well, there you see the score, 17 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. And, Mike, we started off like a house of fire, but Rutgers has come back and uh, put it in the end zone. That's big. The biggest problem for Rutgers right now is how to stop Penn State because they play seven in the box. They just run the football like they're doing right here. Well, here goes Ennis. Inside the 35 and down to the 30. Let's make it the 27 yard line as Crawford finally got to him. Two weeks ago, he's a second team linebacker. We said the story earlier, they had a problem at the tailback position. Mike Archie got kicked in the back. Fran Ganner said, We thought we might move him after spring ball, but we needed him there. We taught him six plays. Now we gave him eight tonight, and look at him. And this is a very talented tailback. They're, we've been telling the Wally Pipp story a lot of places, and this may be another one of those. <laughs> I tell you what, Mike, he's awfully fast for a linebacker, isn't he? Archie is back in the lineup. Sets the pass, just overthrown. Olsimer is the man that he wanted. And Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. You know, guys, Joe Paterno has never liked the idea of playing true freshmen. In fact, in the Penn State... 20-page media guide, you, you can't find the name of a single one. And that's why Curtis Ennis is so intriguing. Just a freshman, a lot of the teammates say that he's a sort of a cross between Kajana Carter, he's got that kind of speed, and he reminds many people of Jim Brown. He's got that kind of power, 4-4 in the 40. 231 pounds. his 
balance inside the 20, and he's close to a first down. Mike Tirico, back to you. Ron, everyone wondered how Florida State was going to blow out Central Florida from 1AA, as we see in this McDonald's breakaway from Tallahassee. They've struggled a bit. Screen pass to Pooh Bear Williams, the big rumbling fullback, gets in the end zone. Florida State leads in this Georgia Ole Miss game. Mike Bobo, the Georgia quarterback, out with a strained medial collateral ligament in his knee. Boy, Georgia, first Edwards, and now Bobo. Tough, tough situation on injuries uh, with the 85 scholarship limit now. Third down and short. This is Mill. Inside the 10, at the 5, he will score. Brian Milne is a type of fullback that doesn't ever care if he carries the football. He just loves blocking for people, and they finally give him the football. And what does he do? He responds to the touchdown. And they have so many weapons on offense. And that's the problem for Rutgers tonight. It's just, how do you want your poison? Do you want it running the football, or do you want to try to come in with an eighth man and get killed out there with Scott Ingram? So Conway with the extra point attempt. He's good again. So with 13 minutes, 59 seconds left until halftime, our new score, Penn State 24 and Rutgers 7. So Meckemeyer is going to try, Mike, what would be a personal best for him. Higgins to hold. They're going to place it down at the 37-yard line. 47-yard attempt. He's got the accuracy. It hits the crossbar, and it goes through. It's good. Well, next week... I, I set you up again. What what do you look for here with this uh, second down? They need to go all the way to the two-yard line to move the chain. The way Penn State is playing the defense on Marco Battaglia, it looks like they're trying to collapse. The linebackers are picking him up on the crossing routes, which means Thunderbird or Harper outside a deep curl should be open. That's been open on all this drive. Started from their own 14, 11 plays. It's been a good design drive by Doug Graber and Robert Higgins, his quarterback. So I would say it's going to go outside. you outside with Thunderbird on the deep curl. Clint Holes, number 13, has checked into the secondary for the Nittany Lions. She had been over visiting with the uh, coordinator. Presley is the lone setback. Three wide receivers. Over the middle, it is incomplete. What a hit by Herring. Got a hand on the football and also a body on the intended receiver, Stephen Harper. That was a good break by Kim Herring. He broke on the ball. It was a very aggressive secondary, secondary player. They had the post pattern, but the ball, ball was thrown fairly decent. Steve Harper's a state sprint champ here in New Jersey. Got good speed, but Kim Herring broke on the football and knocked it away. Mike, before that last play, time of possession in the first half. Rutgers, 19 minutes, 58 seconds. Penn State, 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Third down. He got him. Battaglia, touchdown Rutgers. Seven catches for Battaglia in his first half. 86 yards and now a touchdown. Such soft hands because it looked like that ball was a little bit of a problem for him. But still, his hands, he was able to bring it in for the touchdown. Oh, what a nice job by the offensive line of Rutgers to give Robert Higgins plenty of time. Meyer. 
walks it home. Here's the route. You're going to see Reggie Funderburg come underneath. Marco Battaglia takes a corner route. They just switched the route this time. Number 81 to tight end. Marco Battaglia is going to break it to the corner. Funderburg underneath. And they just collapsed on Funderburg there. And they were able to get behind Clint Holes, the safety. Here's the route, the corner route. Clint Holes is on his back. Look at those hands. He almost dropped that football, but his hands, he's got such soft hands, he's able to bring that ball back in. Now there are the roommates, Lucas, of course, injuring the hand. That was back in the first quarter. And he's right there to cheer his roommate and best friend on. And Robert Higgins, wow, you can just go on and on about what he has done since coming off the bench. And you see those two players together. Doug Graber said he's so indebted to his seniors because they came to Rutgers when he really didn't have a stadium and he didn't have the Big East. And they just kind of bought into his program. Dukowski with the kickoff. It is returnable. And this is Ennis. Ennis breaks by a tackle, takes it for seven more yards. Coming up next on the GMAC Halftime Report, we'll have uh, highlights on Texas A&M and Colorado, the uh, upset of Miami, and Notre Dame rolls today over Texas. That and more coming up at halftime, so stay with us. We have 17 ticks left here at Giant Stadium, 24 to 17. Penn State on top. That's the tackle his mom, and <laughs> she, she's really enjoying this one. And why not? It looked as though it was just an avalanche coming over the top of this stadium in blue and white, and all of a sudden, here came Rutgers back. What did Doug Graves say? He said he'd, he would have 76 people in the crowd tonight, yeah. friends and family. Yeah. Wally Richardson going on top. And Freddie Scott was looking for an inside move, and uh, Wally Richardson threw the ball for him as though he was going to take an out move. Boy, the success that Penn State had early in this game offensively just completely uh, gotten away or gotten out of rhythm. Something has happened to this ball club in the second quarter. Again, you can score too easy, too quick, and go flat. And I think that's what's happened to Penn State. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to be caught from behind by Paul Rivers. That run started at the 33, and it finishes up down at the 26-yard line. 41 yards in the carry. You run a safe play. It's a draw, and Mike Archie breaks it. Even one of the defensive linemen there, Rashad Swinger, number 99, will come back maybe and show him to you. So Archie coming back over to the bench and with only four ticks showing on the clock, Penn State gets Brett Conway out on the field and they will attempt a field goal on this final play or what should be the final play of the first half. That was a safe call by Penn State and even Rutgers was thinking it was going to be a safe play. They figured it may be a throw. Rashad Swinger number 99 defensive lineman. He's a nose guard. He's just going to take off running here. He doesn't even know it's a run. He's going to try to help in pass protecting. Look here. He's just going to help in pass. Next thing he knows there's a run and there goes Mike Archie running with a foot Ball, putting them in a field goal possibility. Safe call, and that was the result. Neither Swinger or Swartz have worked this week because of injuries. And Doug Graber was very concerned about that defensive front because of Knicks, but he, but he couldn't hit him. Well, back to the live action. Field goal attempt, four seconds left. This is going to be a 43-yard attempt. Conway, plenty of leg, and he pushed it off to the right. 
What a comeback by Rutgers. That is the end of the first half with the score. Penn State 24, Rutgers 17. So we're set to get this second half underway as you look at Innes. Curtis Innes, the big freshman who was so impressive in the first half of play. Kakoski will uh, kick it off for Rutgers. Chris Campbell. He's going to reverse his field. If he gets one block here, he's got a wall. And finally stopped just shy of the 45, the 50-yard line. That's a 33-yard return. And Mike Adamley, let's check with you quickly. Coach, this is a game that very easily could have gotten away from you, but with courage and tenacity, your team is right in it. Well, it's, it's kind of been a trademark of ours, and we have a saying, we just keep playing. If we're up by 30 or down by 30, just keep playing. The kids have done a good job, and now we got to have the ball. Coach, it's got to be extremely gratifying to have a player live up to his potential. Robert Higgins has come in, and I know you're very high on him, and has thrown extremely well. Uh, we're very pleased, obviously, with his performance, and uh, I'm hoping to keep it up here this half. How do, you, how do you cut down on the speed for Penn State and the wideouts? Well, they're tough. I mean, they're really tough to handle, and we're putting our corners in a tough position. we got to try to help them a little bit more, but they're a fine, fine offensive team. Okay, Coach, best of luck here in the second half. Thanks, Mike. At interview, uh, Mike Adamley visiting uh, just as they were coming back out of the tunnel to open the second half. Freddie Scott, you could see, dropped that pass. He was open over the middle, and Wally Richardson really got hit after he threw the ball. Pressure up the middle in the running play. Ennis will take it across midfield to the 49. Ron, Rutgers has to keep Penn State guessing. With the eight-man front to stop the run, seven-man front to help on the pass, but they cannot give up the big play. they got to make Penn State earn everything. As you look at the halftime statistics, look at the time of possession for Rutgers. In the first quarter, Penn State kind of owned the first quarter. Third down. They need the 40 of Rutgers. Right over the middle. Drew Vicious has the first down. As Sheridan makes the tackle, Drew Vicious, and now a flag is down, and let's check it. signaling it's a defensive holding. You put in man-to-man -man situations with Ingram and Freddie Scott, I think you have to hold them sometimes. <laughs> it's about the only way to deal with that kind of speed sometimes, isn't it, Mike? Penn State needs to get the rhythm back on offense. They had the rhythm in the first quarter. They were able to run the ball with success. Then when they were able to go outside to Freddie Scott, Bobby Ingram got some big plays in the passing game. Coach seems very happy over the call, but uh, Penn State has the first down, so uh, Coach Paterno got the better of the deal as Totes comes out over the football with his first down at the 39. Pass underthrown, and he had to hurry. Now, here comes a late flag, and that may have been grabbing the face mask of Wally Richardson. I think they're going to call it on uh, the linebacker. Rudy Smith, defensive end, 56. No. They signaled toward Penn State, right? Holding? Mm -hmm. They sure did. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Hot call. So maybe... What had happened is Smith had been grabbed by somebody as he came by, but it looked for the world as though he reached out and grabbed the face mask as well. Anyway, situation is penalty sends it back to the 40-yard line. Well, that means it's going to be a first down, and they need to take it to the 39 to get the first. They had success with the draw just before half. Maybe it's a draw play to Archie. Try to 
to set up the screen to the short side of the field and it went right through Archie's hands. A good pressure by Rudy Smith to trying to slow down the rush with the screen pass to Mike Archie. Rudy Smith, the defensive end, 6'5", 250 senior, putting pressure on again. Working against that good offensive line. Wally Richardson fading back. It's against Keith Conlon, but it just took too long to develop for the Penn State screen. There's the hit by Rudy Smith on Wally Richardson. Mike Swinger, number 99, is the one who dropped off into the zone and kind of messed everything up, causing he couldn't throw the ball with any arc on it. Three-man three rush. Mm -hmm. Deep over the middle, has it complete to Freddie Scott. And he'll be down to the 46, Mike Tirico. Let's check back with you. Ron, remember the name Marquette Smith, who left Florida State two days after they won the national championship? Went near home to Central Florida. Look at that hurtling run. He has two touchdowns and 116 yards against his old teammates today. But E.G. Green and Florida State answer the 42-yard score on this reverse. Florida State comfortably ahead towards the end of the third quarter. Tell you what, though, that's about as low as they've been held in the third quarter the whole year, isn't it, Mike? 39 points. Third down. If they keep this drive alive, they have to take it to the 39-yard line. Richardson got a run. And the big guy is showing that he has some speed along with the size. Very wisely goes out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Cameron Chadwick forced him out. But it's a 23-yard run. Rudy Smith, number 56, the defensive end's going off the field. He's tired. He's been chasing Wally Richardson around for three plays. He had a shot at him again, just couldn't bring him down. Mark Washington missed him also. Wally Richardson be able to get back up within fourth and three. See Rudy Smith, he's tired. John Kunikin's there sending in the defensive signals. They've had a good rush on Wally Richardson. They really have, and the Rutgers bench over there turning to the fans behind them saying, hey, stand up and give us some, some support here. On for it down. Milne takes it close to, yep, he's going to have the first down. Gil Ross will make the stop for Rutgers. They were able to go over their right guard, Jeff Harding's number 50. He was able to clear it out. Milne lost his shoe, so he comes over to the sideline. It'll be Archie along with Whitman as the setbacks for Penn State in a brand new set of downs. 24 to 17, Nittany Lions need. Pass, Ingram. Look at the cut there at the five yard line. Touchdown, Penn State. So explosive because just a few plays ago they had him third and uh, to the bridge here. And they, 31, yeah. And yet now they're in the end zone. Bobby Ingram is so explosive catching that football. Quick post. Should have been a five-yard catch, but they're able to get that big play. Mike, the move that he put on at the five-yard line was just... It almost looked like something that was had been drawn for a cartoon strip. Quick feet. Oh, Real my. quickness in Bobby Ingram. at home and as we go to break let's take one more look at this touchdown by Bobby Ingram 31-17 here in conference play Penn State capped its fifth unbeaten untied season with a Rose Bowl victory over Oregon led by All-American quarterback Kerry Collins and running back Kajana Carter Penn State picked it up as you look at Kerry Collins down on the sideline. Well, Penn State picked it up where they took off in that opening quarter. Well, that was, that's right, and a big play was Wally Richardson's scramble because they started first and 31. They were able to overcome that and get the score. Offense comes over for an immediate discussion of how can we do it again. It's going to be Terrell Willis from the one.
Shoved out of bounds almost to the 35-yard line. When you throw a three-step pass, you've got to be able to chop the defensive end. Here's Andre Johnson, number 68, to get his hands down. That's Rudy Smith, 56. Now he goes to his feet, brings his hands down. Now where, where that gives you a little window if you're the quarterback, Wally Richardson, three-step drop, hands are down on Rudy Smith. Now he just throws the quick slant to Bobby Ingram for the touchdown. Great block by Andre Johnson to get the hands down of Rudy Smith. Anytime you throw a three-step drop, you've got to get the hands down of the defensive ends. All right, Michael. First plate open the second half as well as and he has eight, almost nine yards in the play. Boy, LSU has just really caught on fire, haven't they? They're a good football team. Georgia's fallen behind 18 to 10. Ron, what Rutgers has to do, or what Penn State has to do to Rutgers right now, they've got to find a way to put pressure on Robert Higgins. They cannot let him continually sit back there, spread the field out with receivers, and pick them apart. 10, 30, and 50. After every hour, we'll bring you up to date on college football and other scores in the world of sports. Willis spinning at the line of scrimmage, and while he was spinning, he was being uh, caught by the ankle. Mike Adamley, back to you. Well, Ron and Mike, as you might expect, Ray Luke is crushed by not being able to compete on the field, but he is a big, big fan of Robert Higgins. No special ho advice, however, at halftime. He just told Robert, keep on doing what you're doing. You're doing great. Again, the motto of the senior team, the seniors on this team, no excuses. These guys don't feel like they can uh, want to hang with Penn, Penn State. They want to beat them. They cut it to seven in that second quarter, Mike. Right now back to 14. And Higgins pass. Thunderbird went high in the air, brought it down. That's going to be a Rutgers first down. What Rutgers is doing is spreading the field with four receivers. And they, then Penn State's really having a problem with the tight end, the matchup with Marco Battaglia. But there's no rush on Robert Higgins. They're not able to get any rush out of the front four. They've got to be able to give up a linebacker to try to hurry Robert Higgins in his throwing motion. And when you do that, you got to find somebody to man up with the tag there. Willis makes a nice move to the outside, turns the corner, and he will have the Rutgers first down. Mike Tirico, back to you. Ron, Fresno and Utah are playing tonight. The winner will be tied with Colorado State for the WAC lead. Some wackiness here. Mike Fouts, the nephew of Dan Fouts, throws it back to Kevin Dyson. The option to Rocky Henry. This game's tied at seven. <laughs> How many assists do you give on that play, huh? <laughs> That was a pretty good design play. Yeah, it was. Well, it worked. It's always a good design yeah. when it works. Penn State came with a blitz in the last play, and they had a good call with Terrell Willis getting outside on the uh, sweep. This time it's Presley, and he goes straight ahead with a good surge from that offensive line, and Filardi will stop him at around the 35-yard line. We have Filardi unofficially with seven tackles. Here's the answer for Penn State right now. They're not able to get any pressure. Watch the linebackers. Number six, Aaron Collins. Number 44, Jim Nelson. They're going to blitz. They're going to come inside. That now is trying to get some help, get some pressure on Robert Higgins. Also, you can see Schioli did a nice job of uh, stepping up to fill the hole. Tagley in motion to drag him over the middle, and he threw it. Well, should have been caught, but he threw it a little bit low. It's like it's hit him on that uh, right thigh pad. A little bit low and a little bit late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the kind of ball that they got the single up coverage that they were looking for that you were talking about. They got it with the blitz coming now, and that's that's the matchup that really Penn State hasn't had an answer for tonight. They have not been able to stop Marco Battaglia. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. Penn State by 14, 31-17. Got it away, and it's almost intercepted. And Mike, I'll tell you what happened. Battaglia, they got single coverage on him, and without the pressure, 
If he had been able to see his big tight end, that was six rushers. But, but that's been what's happened in the first half, Ron. They were not able to get any pressure. Now what they're saying is, hey, we're going to get a uh, stunt. We're going to get our mid middle linebacker, Flaherty, up in the face of Robert Higgins. We're not going to let him pick us apart like that. So, uh, And you're right. The, the, the problem we said is there's not anybody to man up with Pataglia right now. But it's hard to throw when you're falling on your back. <laughs> Fourth down. They need five yards. Throwing it back. Battaglia all alone at the 28-yard line. Look at this move. The 79 folks that are here with the Battaglia family celebrating in the stands. Just increased to about 10,000. <laughs> but the answer when people start to pressure you with the front four and blitz a little bit is the screen. And that's what they were able to do. Back to Mark of Battaglia again. Nick Mickemeyer with the extra point attempt. Right down Broadway. So let's take a break. 9.45 to play, third quarter. Our new score, Penn State 31, Rutgers 24. First Penn State receiver to go over 1,000 yards, and Freddie Scott, Scott was right behind him. He was just under 1,000 yards. Whitman turns the corner, touchdown, Nick Milan. Milne with an outstanding block. When you're outmanned, it's tough to stop anybody. John Gudikins is trying to roll the dice. He's trying to make it a guessing game. He's trying to fool him. He's trying to do everything he can. But he's just outmanned on defense tonight. Conway tries to make it a 38-24 ball game and put Penn State back on top by 14. does just that so as we take a break seven minutes left in the third quarter one more look at the touchdown Milne with the block and John Whitman with the touchdown he split them so it is 38 to 27. Penn State now leads by 11. Got a reminder next Saturday at 2 of 25, 214 yards and two touchdowns. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. They get the pass away. It's intercepted and that's going to go for a Tim Herring touchdown. Tim Herring with the intercept and touch. That's what they've been trying to do tonight. They pressured him. Man coverage at Kim Herring, a defensive back on Marco Battaglia. I don't think Robert Higgins ever saw Kim Herring because he just ducked and threw the football. He did not have any vision of where Kim Herring was at. He did have vision of where Jim Nelson was. Watch the pressure 44 puts on him, Mike. Well, the pressure's going to be on Robert Higgins, and they pressured him. He just did not see Kim Herring. It looked like they had Marco Battaglia double. They're going to take him away one way or another. Well, that is the second turnover that has given Penn State points. And when he gets the point right here, that's two turnovers, giving up 14 points for the net needle. Forty-five to twenty-seven. Penn State on top. Seven oh three to play. Looking for Ingram. Did it keep his feet in bounds? Yes. Touchdown, Penn State. Three touchdowns for Bobby Ingram tonight. One on a fumble return, two touchdown passes. Four 
Allen. That's right. That's his third touchdown reception and the fumble return. It's a good combination, Wally Richardson and Bobby Ingram. Rutgers has just not been able to stop the big play. What's impressive on this touchdown pass by Wally Richardson is the fact that he scans the field. He's going to step back. He's looking the right side for Freddie Scott. Came back to a backside receiver. Bobby Ingram caught him in the corner. He carries. He, he keeps his feet in bounds as well as anybody I've seen in college football. He's nice. A lot tonight. 11 tackles. Fourth down. it back this side. The Taglia caught it. Oh, this is inbounds. They're going to give him a touchdown. Oh, that's a great touch now. That is impressive. Two defenders for Penn State. Unmarkable tag. That's a great touch. Mike, the pro scouts have just got to be drooling over this guy. And those guys there, the fans are counting their money. And the, the, uh, the Taglia family, <laughs> they're getting ready for this man to move on. This is a good route again, but watch the two defensive backs for Penn State. Kim Herring go up, but just great hands. He's bobbled a little bit, but he had his feet in bounds. I think that's a super, super catch. It's awfully good concentration. Oh, is he impressed. He's had a great night. People in the Big East are gonna have to find ways to stop him. Let me ask you, who other, who other? What other tight ends in the country are, are playing better than this kid? I can't think of anybody right now. 13 catches tonight, tied to school record. Very involved in the in the offense. Offense is really kind of set around him. Meyer has the extra point, and let's check in with us quite as much when that happened. Chris Campbell setting up top of your screen. Got him wide open, and that is Chris Campbell for the touchdown. Just talking about how many points you need. Now there's a flag back of the line of scrimmage. Doug Graber is not happy with that call. Offside on the defense. Mike, I, two of the assistant coaches for Rutgers looked over toward the Penn State bench and just held their arms out to the side as if to say, why? Well, I'm sitting up here, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. Why? Well, I was looking for Pitts or somebody else to, to run the clock down, but they did not have that happen, and that'll be discussed a little bit this coming week. Maybe a lot. Mike Barnica to uh, attempt this extra point. Let's go to Mike Tariq. This could be the uh, the last play of the ball game. It's Ralph Saka, the retro freshman quarterback. Goes into center. So this one is history. Doug Graber was not going to be very pleased. Now Joe Paterno is very disturbed over the fact that Doug Graber said something to him. Well, when you throw one like that at the end, you can expect that from the other side. So that's 
the end of our ball game with the score Penn State 59 and Rutgers 34. Sports Center is next.